Welcome back, welcome back. This is still Why in the Morning and today is WCW, which is the hashtag we are using. If you're just joining us, you are on time for the first conversation of the day. And we have a lovely lady with us. She's called Zipporah Wanyeki. She's a counselor and a teacher. And we, of course, we are celebrating her. But we're doing that by talking about a topic that she is very passionate about. And this is some, you know, domestic violence and how we can curb that. And particularly today, we'll be talking about effects of domestic violence on children. So uh, she's here to help us with this topic. Kai Busana Zipporah. Asante Sana. How are you? I'm good. I'm also fine. And you're not a first-time visitor. Uh, no, you're no. part of us. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> By now, you know, uh, everyone knows you. But uh, feel free to introduce yourself again in case there's something I've not mentioned. Yeah, true. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, as I said earlier on, my name is Zipora Wanyeki. I'm a teacher. I'm a counselor. I'm a trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, I do all those things. I'm a mentor. Mm -hmm. I mentor a lot of young people. And I believe that uh, we are going to talk to young people about how to deal with their issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And why are you, before we get into mm -hmm. it, why are you, because today is all about strength of a woman yes. and also celebrating mm -hmm. women like you who are out there advocating for such, you know, negative things in the society mm -hmm. to, you know, to cease from being. Mm -hmm. So why, why are you passionate about fighting against domestic violence? Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about it because I know that... Uh, the nitty gritty behaviors that you see with these young ones, mm -hmm. they can be explained if we look back at where they came from. If you want to shape a child behavior, you first of all have to give this child a safe environment. So if they grow up in some environment where they are seeing chaos, they are seeing crime, and we want to shape a generation, we are losing it. So we need to give them a very mm -hmm. secure environment for them to be so that we can even nurture their talent and make them go to the society and become themselves. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's talk about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. People have different understanding of it. So what is it? Domestic violence. Uh, Stephanie, the easiest way to explain domestic violence, one that will be understood by anybody in the society, mm -hmm. it is any form of violence or aggression for that matter mm -hmm. that is subjected towards you within your family, within your circles, uh, say a family member or someone who is close to you. That mm -hmm. is basically what is domestic violence. Okay. Yeah, and uh, when we talk about it, it can be in, in many forms, yeah? So domestic violence can be, it can take the form of uh, maybe emotional, physical. So we are going to look at maybe the forms that mm -hmm. are there so that somebody so, knows mm -hmm. uh, exactly what we are talking about. But it is anything that is against your wish, something that intimidates you. It doesn't even have to be physical. It can mm -hmm. be emotional, it can be something else. So what are the forms of domestic violence? Uh, that we have, eh? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, one common one that we know of is mm -hmm. the physical one. Physical um, uh, uh, type of violence is whereby somebody comes and beats you up, a slap on your face. You know, when you're doing it, mm -hmm. it looks very harmless. Yeah. But uh, looking at it, if somebody slaps you at your age now, Nashanga, couldn't we reason in better terms? Yeah, so somebody who, reason, mm -hmm. who, who, who slaps you. And let us picture this, uh, because we are talking of domestic, think of partners, a spouse, mm -hmm. a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there are better ways of solving problems instead of slapping beating you know punching strangling that is physical other than that and it, it is very bad because it has also even resorted to chopping of hands the other day yeah, you saw it mm -hmm. on media a lady who waited in her marriage and her hands were chopped off eh? yeah, others so will sad. chop even the private parts you know it's chaotic eh? mm -hmm. other than uh, physical we can have now what you call the emotional violence Emo there's emotional violence oh yes psychological one how? Now, this one will come in the form of insult. Somebody abuses you verbally, calling you all domestic and wild animals. Mm -hmm. I mean, it becomes very hurtful. Something body shaming, for example. Mm -hmm. You're too fat, you're too what? Maybe let's talk to Kenyans. Um, there are things we can control and there are those that we cannot control. So don't insult, don't, don't talk to somebody based on their body appearance. Some people are very sensitive, yeah. especially ladies. Yeah, uh, ladies are very sensitive with whatever it is, how they appear. Don't mm -hmm. go, look for a better way of telling them you're big. Don't say you are as fat as a pig. That's sure. too harsh. Yeah, that's and maybe she's harsh. struggling with her, 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 her body fat. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it can be body shaming. It can be verbal abuse. And uh, did you know, Stephanie, that even rejection is part of emotional abuse? Rejection? Yes. How so? Imagine this child who is so innocent and she feels rejected in her family. The parent doesn't want her. 
your mother doesn't want you your father doesn't want you nobody wants you that's psychological torture enough to this child enough to cause you to commit mm -hmm. suicide for example so most people so who that's so that's why we see cases of children committing suicide. Someone is yeah. seven years old, you mm -hmm. wonder what has been going through their mind for mm -hmm. them to think of suicide as yeah. their option. Okay, there could be many other factors that maybe can uh, lead to that, mm -hmm. but if you find out well, it's not common for everybody to wake up and decide to end their life. Honestly, who doesn't want to live? Mm -hmm. So if you see something like that, eh, children who feel rejected, and you don't have to tell them that to reject them. Your action shows. And do you know even babies, babies, small babies, they have a way of knowing whether they are loved or not. Mm -hmm. You try making faces and they feel like this one doesn't love me. They cry out. <laughs> <laughs> try making something. So the babies yeah. know where, a home that is safe and one that is chaotic. So mm -hmm. that is psychological form of torture. And uh, I was telling another group somewhere that uh, the, 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 the nerve in the brain that receives physical pain is the same nerve that receives psychological pain. Wow. That's how you see people had mm -hmm. broken and so he's crying. You wonder, the yeah. same nerve that you see when you're affected. cut, it is the same, same nerve that gets that pain. That's why you see somebody, you know, manifesting in crying mm -hmm. and all those things. Eh? Wow. That is a psychological uh, form of torture. Mm -hmm. There are other forms that we can talk about, for example, early marriage. Early that marriages, is also a form of it's a form of abuse. You're denying this person the opportunity to go and be in school. Mm -hmm. uh, other than early marriages, you can talk about FGM, what you call the female genital mutilation. Mm -hmm. It's a form of abuse. It's a form okay. of violence. Yeah. It's against this child. And sometimes you hear it um, in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in, the, in the society and you hear the grandmother say it mm -hmm. has to be done. And it is done in a very crude way, using some very weird objects mm -hmm. that even pose harm to this young girl. It's a form of violence. It was against your will. Yeah. You get it? Huh? There are others that can f uh, come in the form of uh, financial, for example. Uh, this husband who denies the wife opportunity to go and work. Mm -hmm. You sit down like the others. Simply because he is afraid this wife might go out there and is beautiful and will other be seen by other be people. <laughs> yes, mutu yeah. wakupotea and wakupotea. So by the end of the day, all those insecurities, you can really manage them. Eh? The others that say that you are not supposed to own property. Mm. Women are supposed to be seen and not to be heard. Women are counted as, chil as children. Mm -hmm. So that's a form of violence. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is intriguing into your rights. You okay. suppose, I mean, who, Kenya, who Everyone doesn't own property? Right. Yeah. So when somebody says you cannot because of your gender, and then you start fighting about it, it it's a form of violence. Mm -hmm. So there are so many other forms of violence that we can talk about, but basically maybe we can characterize them in those. Even these people yeah. who force abortion. A, a young girl gets married, and then the husband says, no, up and December, I don't want kids. So this person forces an abortion to the girl. It's a form of violence. It was against the girl yeah, was are. willing to keep the baby. This other mm -hmm. person decides, no, you terminate it. They manipulate. When you feel manipulated, it's a form of violence. Okay, so the, mm -hmm. all these are form of, uh, forms of domestic oh, violence. Oh, yes, they are forms of domestic violence because this person has not allowed you to be. It is either physical mm -hmm. or emotional. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. And now uh, we want to look at the aspect of how children are affected by that. Mm -hmm. And there's a research that said that uh, early relationships, whether abuse or neglect, mm -hmm. neglect mm -hmm. have a long, uh, long term impact on children, mm -hmm. a brain that has adopted to survive. Oh, yeah, sure. So how, how does it affect the child? OK, fine. Um, when we were doing research, mm -hmm. we found that in Nairobi alone, it accounts for 41% of children who are victims of domestic violence. Nairobi alone. 41%. 41% is very high. Very high. 41 out of 100. So out of 100 children, 41 of them, they are victims. So they have grown in mm -hmm. um, uh, dysfunctional homes where they see the mother and the father fight and such. Eh? And so you would want to know mm -hmm. um, what happens when mm -hmm. these uh, or how does it manifest in these children mm -hmm. one of the effect that it has maybe we can characterize uh, these children we can give them into levels eh? we have the preschool preschoolers these are the toddlers that are going to join school or maybe they haven't joined school mm -hmm. the baby class those children eh? mm -hmm. how it manifests to them one they can go to a there's a behavior there's a defense mechanism we call uh, regression regression is sleeping back to an earlier stage you had already outgrown. For example, bedwetting. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So a child maybe by 2 by 3 years maybe depending on um, on, on on how the baby grows has outgrown that is no longer bedwetting mm-hmm. but now has started seeing this type of violence at home mother fighting and punching and screaming at night so this child because of stress goes back to bedwetting unaanza kusema mtoto sasa ameanza kuwa mjinga aje kuwa mjinga you are the reason you are the, the reason other mm-hmm. than that they can also go to the sucking they start sucking their thumbs so if you are a caregiver you are a teacher and you notice that a child has already outgrown a stage and is slowly coming back to it find out the levels of stress mm-hmm. with that child they cry a lot you know they are they have anxiety they are f- afraid they feel something bad might happen i'm going to school eh? my mom might be killed mm-hmm. my dad always versa it doesn't so have to be mom so they are always ready or oh, they oh, yes. prepared for danger like yes. there's a looming danger yes somewhere. and they cry a lot other than that they have trouble sleeping by the way Mm. Uh, when they sleep you 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 find they wake up in the middle of the night and they are talking things because they are afraid they have nightmares and such stuff eh? okay. they also have trouble eating therefore this child will not concentrate those are preschoolers mm. you come to now these um, children that are in school let's talk of preteens mm. preteens uh, it's a duration between 9 to 12 years they are not yet teenagers yeah. they are they are preparing but they have started showing signs of becoming teenagers 9 mm. to 12 you notice the preteens they blame themselves for it i think i'm the reason my parents are fighting so what do they do mm-hmm. they start saying something like i'll quit this home and i'll go and i'll never come back ah. so as a teacher if you hear that kind of a statement you're supposed to know nyumbani sio kuzuri Mm-hmm. they should address their issues at home because they take the blame and when we were teaching people about loss eh, i told people that uh, this age group uh, they always feel like they're the reason why their mom or their dad died they blame everything on themselves why if only is it I a was stage a, yeah it's a stage if mm-hmm. only i was a good child my mother would not have died my ba- my father would not have died they feel like they were the cause of that death mm-hmm. if not well monitored you can go to depression and all the such things eh? mm-hmm. so these children have trouble concentrating in class they will not why they are disturbed mm-hmm. they have trouble forming relationships okay yeah because these children they have seen struggles at home so they they they, they are building something you're building i always say that um, um children it's like the formative years of a child is like wet cement Mm-hmm. Now whatever you place on it will last it forever. Stick yeah, for it is stick. That is what we are told. And you notice that between uh, around 7 years mm-hmm. to 12 years they listen a lot, observe a lot, but they are quiet. You might be tempted to think that this child make it to apa kuna kitu anafanya. They are recording. Their brain is recording. Mm. When God afike that in years they start acting out. Wow. Okay. They act out what they have been recording mm. previous years. So what has this child been recording violence mm-hmm. what will act out in their teenage uh, 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 stage they'll start now becoming violent so that's why we have bullies in school oh yes so when we come now to teenagers that is where now kazi iko teenagers how they deal or how they manifest because of the violence they see at home mm-hmm. one they can become bullies bullies it means you know it's it's, it's a projection of a behavior when i am bitter Mm-hmm. and you come and 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 you do something on me I'll slap you why because i'm bitter because that is your normal because that is what was inside me that is what is spilling over to you. Mm-hmm. you 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 come and you look at somebody you make a comment and this person abuses you why that was what was inside them so when you see a bully uh, in as much as they they are characterized with what you call maladjusted behaviors there is a good reason behind bullying a good reason a normal mm-hmm. child will not go bullying why for what reason So you notice that they can bully if they don't bully they become victims of bully. So they they are either the bully oh, yes. or they are the victims of bully. You notice for example girls uh they have this uh, personality that is not very aggressive. So mm-hmm. they could be victims of a bully. If it's a boy he will go physical. He wants to you know pour out project whatever is inside him to other people. Mm-hmm. Are you getting it? Yeah. Uh, other than becoming bullies or victims of bully, there's something that is very worrying. Mm-hmm. And everybody every parent who is parenting a teenager uh, should be cautious about that. What we call engaging in dangerous behaviors. Why are they doing that? Nikulipisha, nataka kulipisha kisazi. This is what I saw at home. Behaviors. Some of these dangerous behavior unprotected sex. 
-hmm. They know very well. At teenage, we've taught a lot of HIV and AIDS uh, uh, stuff, and they know what can happen and what can cause, what can spread HIV. But they still go ahead as a way of punishing their parents. Uh -huh, they you, you know, they, they, they have emotions that are, um, they want to vent out these emotions. So what do they do? They misbehave. Mm -hmm. One of them is unprotected sex. Another one, they engage in drugs. Mm -hmm. Drugs, either alcohol, bangi, you, they could even be smoking, shisha, all those things. They want to do that so that the parents can feel the pinch. Mm. Unfortunately, some parents are not there. If you grew up in, in a home where both parents are alcoholic, serious drunkards, yeah. you think they know whether you smoked or you did not. They, don't they were not there to monitor you. They are absent parents. Mm. So this child harms themselves. Because if you go asking, when they come for counseling mm -hmm. and we ask them, you said you, 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 you started an uh, unhealthy relationship. Why was that? And somebody says, I was stressed. Mm -hmm. And you're like, so why? What was your cause of stress? You would expect them to say books, nini. Compare, no, at home, my, mad, my, my dad, they always, we were always fighting. And that is why I was doing that. So you notice that they engage in dangerous behavior. Mm -hmm. So they can, uh, they can uh, get into addictions that they are not able to come out of them. Okay. Because w once you learn a behavior, it will take time before you unlearn yes, that mm -hmm. behavior. So some of these things can be irreversible. For example, you engage in... Uh, this kind of sex and then you 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 get the hiv virus and could that be one of the reasons where many teenagers according to the recent statistics mm -hmm. we have a high uh number of teenagers yes. who are hiv positive mm -hmm. and even pregnant did you did you notice the other day that the, the mm. media uh, was airing that about the high number of teenage yeah. and either either teenage pregnancy and or hiv, HIV. infection and uh, there's a slogan that goes around the youth. Me, I interact with them so much, so I, I get to listen to what they say. Mm -hmm. This is something like, where a father cancer, I mean, a father HIV, cancer, cancer is deadly. So, so people, they actually, oh, people have a brain of cancer instead of HIV. My. And they have their own reasons, and they, they, they reason, and you're almost believing them. Mm -hmm. But come to think of, yeah, sure, they tell you, you know, cancer. cancer is deadly, cancer will kill you, HIV, you can take mm -hmm. ARVs and you're living. So they see it as an option oh, that it's yes. okay now. And people fear pregnancy more than HIV, by the way. Wow. You go asking these young, young girls in town and whatnot, they fear pregnancy than HIV. HIV. See, the other day people were in Vasha. <laughs> And, and you could right. you could get to hear those who went there. What they were afraid of more than HIV was, was pregnancy. Was pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So uh, because of this, you know, uh, you know, during our times, mm -hmm. I remember when HIV came, we were taken for these. Uh, they used to call those videos watotokae ni chini, mm -hmm. and they would bring the videos, and we would watch, and we were afraid of seeing a sick person dying. I think uh, people really need to be, uh, you know, that awareness need to be created once more, once more so okay. that they know that HIV is also not a joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you eat well. If you find yourself there, then we give you coping mechanism. But before, if we can prevent you from going there, the better. The better. Yes. Mm -hmm. So these children, you will find them engaging in that kind of behavior. Other than that, they also have difficulties in concentrating in class. Mm -hmm. and so this they, is one of the ways oh, yeah. maybe a teacher can identify. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. A disturbed child has difficulty concentrating. Why? Your mind is a way. You've, uh, I'm sure you, you, you kept on hearing teachers saying where? Rudy Darasani. Mm. And you wonder, Kwan, you will wapi? <laughs> it means your brain was taken away. So picture this. My mom came at night. My dad came at night. And they were fighting and I could hear them screaming. Who's in you? Do you want? And I left that morning for school and left my mom at home. What makes you think I will be concentrating not thinking that my mom will be killed? Mm -hmm. So another thing that they do, they play what you call truancy. Truancy is they running away school. from school yeah. uh, with, without the right reason, without permission, and you are not permitted, you don't have the right reason to be away. Yeah. So why are they playing truancy? It is because they feel like, if I leave my parents at home, what I wanna. So they feel, if I'm there, yeah. probably I can control something. Yeah. Another thing that happens to these people in future, that is why I'm very passionate about telling them, mm -hmm. uh, we want to form a healthy generation. If this person was a victim of violence, also parents fighting at home, what will happen in future, he could also initiate Replicate the same. It. What is good for dad is also good for me. So dad was fighting mom. It's I am okay a boy. I marry. I'll also fight my, my, wife. my wife. So you, you, you feel like uh, this is my mentor. 
if my mentor smokes i smoke mm-hmm. if my mentor battles wives i also battle mine because mm-hmm. you feel like this is the right thing so you may never end that cycle mm-hmm. if it starts with people because mm-hmm. it, it, it's something that uh, they saw it happening and they also want to continue with it if it's a girl she might also become a victim of domestic violence because in her marriage she saw her she mom saw her being mom. beaten so it's okay for her to and be she thought too. like it's no more to be beaten mm. it's no more to, to to experience this kind of violence so she might stomach too much she doesn't know that uh, she has her own rights so she might also go there and become a victim and i have never known maybe i'm doing research why uh, i'm sure you've heard of uh, people we call narcissists eh? mm-hmm. people who control and manipulate others eh? yeah. i have never known why if you grew up in a in a narcissistic home you are likely to get married off to a narcissist i've never known why is it because like attracts like ama you are looking for solace then you find yourself again in the same place i have never known maybe we need to do research about yes, that we will do research and <laughs> when you get it please come back and tell us <laughs> i will <laughs> definitely uh-huh. yeah so <laughs> now uh, and what about mental health issues you mm-hmm. know children who have experienced this are they at a higher uh, risk of experiencing mental health issues when they grow up yeah true true they are and one of them uh, is what you call depression and uh, when we are explaining depression we say that extreme stress leads to depression mm-hmm. so depression is a state of hopelessness because you have tried to be strong for too long but now you've become hopeless Mm-hmm. so that person is depressed you feel empty from inside so this child has grown seeing violence and feels like life is worthless nina soma ili nipate job niolewe na mtu kama huyu niendelee na maisha kama haya i don't want it so these children they are mentally disturbed a lot so they'll have a lot of stress they'll have depression and all those other for example they are likely mm-hmm. to uh, suffer from what we call uh, a, a phobia phobia yeah fear an anxiety of- they, they they suffer from anxiety disorders i'm sure you have had what you call ptsd post traumatic stress disorder so they also have ptsd yes, yes. they they're likely to to, to have one eh? mm-hmm. for example if you are at a mall and then there was explosion you will be afraid of going back to the mall again isn't it mm-hmm. now if you are in an accident and 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 maybe you are saved you will fear maybe using Traveling cars with a car, yeah. yes now if you are in a kind of a home mm-hmm. where there was chaos you will be afraid to get married or to marry and even to be to find yourself in such kind of a home so these people you you you, you hear them getting panic attacks and you wonder sasa hii imemtoka wapi they they form because of such mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right before we get to how we can help them mm-hmm. so, you, you, we mentioned that we mentioned about preschoolers preteens yeah. and teenagers mm-hmm. but what about infants do they also take this in once they're small maybe someone a baby three months old Mm -hmm. are they also affected yes Mm -hmm. leave alone infants let's talk about fetus the ones that are in the womb oh okay oh yes the first thing when uh, Mm -hmm. a woman uh, conceives the first thing to form is the heart isn't it Mm -hmm. Uh, the heart forms and then these are the organs of the body forms um the brain is the last one to mature towards the lungs towards the ninth month eh? Mm-hmm. If something happens because uh, as at around 5 6 7 months if you're speaking to this baby inside the womb the baby hears we even told that they see light oh. inside there so if you're speaking to this baby they hear so they know that the mother today is happy if the mother is sad they also know the so mother the is people, sad you know, what about if the mother is screaming they know that they they know nikubaya trouble. they know it's 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 bad so when you are experiencing chaos from outside mm-hmm. here and, and and let me let's talk to people and tell them the dangers of that eh? mm-hmm. um um when a mother is pregnant is expectant she needs total peace because that is the time you're forming the character and the personality and everything of this baby even the personality everything about this baby everything about you unakuja <laughs> umeibeba it can be shaped by environment but the yeah. total you you come with it you come packaged okay all right so you realize that uh, if you tamper with this mother if you, the, the, there are things we used to call teratogens mm-hmm. teratogens are those things that can affect um the mother so mm-hmm. that you get you don't get a healthy baby depending on when the teratogen ha- happened it will depend with what deformity you get maybe it happened when your uh, eyes are being formed so you born blind your ears so you born without uh-huh. hearing so whatever so maternal stress is one of the teratogens we are talking about mm-hmm. a mother being stressed okay malnutrition among so many others so if you are stressing this mother when a certain uh, the baby was being formed chances of this baby being born with some 
issues yeah, are something. very high. So these children in the womb, they can be affected by stress. And now when they are born, I've just told you, babies know how to look at you. I know this is a happy face. This, <laughs> this is, is a sad, a sad face. face. This, is, this is a dangerous face. And they look at you and they cry. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and they, they feel, you know, they, 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 are, they are human beings and the brain is fully operational. Mm. So they have a feeling. It's only that they are limited in movement, but they have a feeling of being insecure and being okay. Okay. So if they grow up in chaotic homes, mm -hmm. if you try banging the door or dropping something, see the baby? They, yeah. Oh yeah, you see them a meshtuka. Why? It's because they know this is a flight movement. Nikutoroka. Mm. That is what happens. All right. Mm -hmm. So they're also affected. Oh yeah, now, they are. Now how can uh, we help, you mm -hmm. know, the society, even mm -hmm. the teachers, the caregivers, mm -hmm. these children that have been in homes where they've experienced domestic violence? Thank you. Uh, there are many ways that we can help them. One of them being reassuring them. Mm -hmm. If this child, you see, what unasema maji ya kimwagika hayazoleki. So if something has happened and they find themselves um, with a lot of panic, anxiety, and all those fears, mm -hmm. um, you reassure them that all is well. When they come for counseling, we try to tell them separate issues. Mm -hmm. Those are mom and dad issues. You have your own life to live. So let them not start mm -hmm. taking side, oh, mimi tunachapa baba, ama mimi tunachapa mama, or something like that. Eh? Let them be individualized. Eh? So other than reassuring them, there's something we call um, a, 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 a support system. You can get support system. And by support system, talk to counselor. Talk to therapist. They'll take you through. They'll be able to tell you now, this is not a healthy relationship. Because I've come to realize, mm -hmm. most people do not draw a line, a clear line, a clear boundary mm -hmm. between a healthy relationship and a toxic one. Okay. Somebody calls you 16 times and you interpret that for love. But you know, Jumi and Anipendaga, Aki is just <laughs> calling me. And I need to make a job. You're really toxic. Uh, <laughs> I mean, why are you monitoring me? Why, who gave you who gave you deputy what? Why are you monitoring me throughout? Mm -hmm. I mean, one call, two two times is enough. Yeah. Once I get it, I'll call you. Most of these people, they are monitoring what you're doing. They are feeling insecure for them wherever they are. That's why they are calling 16 times. It's you not, interpret that for love. love. But if, if, if you are that keen person, you'll know these are red light. Mm -hmm. uh, one time is enough. I'll get back to you once I'm... I'm done. So um, you can now help. A therapist will help you to know that uh, in as much as you want to stay strong for these children, sometimes mm. being away is better for them. Because why stay in a marriage where these kids are seeing baba anakuja, anawachapa wate, wewe mpaka na watoto, muna vunjwa migu, nanini, you scream the whole night, hamulali, you are at panic. Do you know sleeping means you are peaceful? Mm hmm for you to it get should. enough it's, sleep, you must be peaceful. You peace. <laughs> if you have something disturbing you, Stephanie, you can mm. So you notice that these children cannot sleep, they cannot develop, they cannot do what. Why be strong for them and you're injuring them? Mm -hmm. You want to retain this marriage because of them. But you're doing them a lot of harm than good. So you'd rather be away. Look at your children while you're at a distance. So we have not come to tell people to go and divorce, but we are saying, assess your situation mm -hmm. and realize, can I stay all? Is it doing us good or harm? Mm -hmm. And you separate yourself. And these children will thank you later. They'll notice it and was the best decision. Okay. And does the, doesn't the relocation affect these children at some point? Um, we talk about what we call the lesser evil, which is the lesser evil, mm -hmm. that they sit there every day not sleeping and not doing and not doing, or you take them, yeah, they might feel, and sometimes they are so bitter, even with this father or mother, for example, whoever is mistreating them, they are so bitter with them that they say, ah, thank God, <laughs> Yeah, because now, because your peace of mind comes first. Before you can even love, you have to be peaceful. Mm. So you want me to love somebody who has been beating my mother? Not really. Can so happen. they would rather, uh, you, and what would happen happened if, uh, if the mother died, for example? They would blame themselves. Exactly. Or the father. Because uh, domestic violence doesn't have to be one. So it can also be the mother abusing the father. The father. Yeah. So if one of them dies, they'll blame themselves forever. So let them at least be somewhere that mm -hmm. they can be helped. Oh, so you okay. can form support system. There's something we call cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. Mm -hmm. Now this is a talk therapy. If you visit a counselor or a therapist, they'll take you through that. Mm -hmm. They're able to assess your negative emotions, your positive emotions, and the way the damage Mm -hmm. This domestic violence has had on you. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and they tell you the way forward you 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 are able to pave a way forward okay mm-hmm. and how do we help them build relationships because now you've said they mm-hmm. have trouble mm-hmm. forming relationships and even trusting people mm-hmm. i think maybe when someone is being kind to them it's it's something that is not mm-hmm. you know common or i don't know okay. you tell so how do do we help them form relationships? You can help these people form relationship. Number one, I always say that they have to move on. Life has to move on. So let them forgive themselves because hmm. they feel very bitter. Yeah. After they forgive themselves, let them forgive their parents. Mm-hmm. And then let them, you know, when you want to, you model good behavior when mm-hmm. you want somebody to be well behaved. So let them now know that in society, it's only these ones who are fighting. Not everybody is fighting. So, pick, I mean, um, uh, give them or expose them to positive role models. Mm-hmm. It can be in church. It can be uh, in a school setup or el- everywhere else. So, when you expose them to positive role models, they'll notice, ah, kumbe siyo kina mtu uwa ivo. So, kumbe I can have. So, the, when they get their esteem back, they can form relationship. Mm-hmm. People are not able to nurture their relationship because of their self-esteem. So either they have a bruised ego, mm-hmm. either they have a bloated ego. It can be, it can be in either way. A bloated ego will not nurture friendship. Yeah. A bruised one will not. equally not nurture friendship. Mm-hmm. So if they can have a balanced self-esteem that they know, yeah, I know these ones did this, but I can. Uh, we, we teach learners um, about uh, assertiveness and self-awareness. You know your strength and your weakness. Then you can, you can maneuver in life. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And now once a caregiver, or maybe a teacher identifies that this child is going through, mm-hmm. is in our toxic environment. Mm -hmm. where there's domestic violence Mm -hmm. so now does it mean that the, the, the person should be more lenient to them such Mm -hmm. that uh there's they give them lighter there's no consequence or you know you're treating them in a way to you know to show them love but does it mean that there's no uh, consequence to actions no for example you notice that this person has become a bully and you ask them, why are you bullying your friend? Mm-hmm. It's because I found it at home. My mother fights my dad. Mm-hmm. We don't take that. You will correct behavior. But now after you correct behavior, because we always say, before you can take somebody for counseling, first of all, let this person go through the, the consequence of that behavior. Mm-hmm. After this person has gone through the concept, for example, you did something wrong, you would be punished. After you undergo punishment, then you go to see the guidance and counseling department. They'll be able to help you so that you can now come to terms. So we still uh, we still uh, uh, punish or we still uh, give consequences to the crime committed. Okay. If you don't, <laughs> you'll be rewarding bad behavior. Okay. And something rewarded is likely to repeat itself. Mm. So they'll feel I like f- uh, bullying. So we continue to become more bullies. Mm. So who ta kume msaidia? What about that child who's <laughs> now the the one being bullied mm-hmm. because of what they've experienced. So now they are fearful mm-hmm. and they're silent. Mm-hmm. So how do you treat them? Now that one, you nurture them, you take them through the counseling process. One, to heal, to forgive themselves, to g- forgive their parents. Mm-hmm. Then you teach them coping skills coping mechanism you teach them assertiveness Mm -hmm. you know if you are assertive a bully will not be able to deal with you assertive means when i say no i mean no and i am not guilty about it that is assertive behavior so this person this bully who comes and wants to manipulate you and be a no i know my rights you see he will not do anything else yeah and they manipulate you so that you don't report on be a no i will report you mm. so they know you, you cannot just have your way out so we teach them assertiveness all right mm-hmm. and is there any difference in in terms of proximity mm-hmm. you know for a child who is always witnessing the violence mm-hmm. and the child who is usually in the room or told to go to the room mm-hmm. once the violence is going on mm-hmm. yeah there is not much difference because Mm. I told you the nerve that receives pain is the same, physical or emotional. Uh-huh. Now, I think it is more torturing. This one who is within mm. the vicinity might come out bruised and injured because somehow you're trying to separate. Eh? Mm-hmm. So it is very stressful and very traumatic. But picture now this other person who was locked in their bedroom, but is hearing the mother say, Zusini you screaming out mm. you are more stressed so while you are there you have there. more torture you have more torture when you are there you are mm. not sure what to do and you feel locked up okay. so not much that you can do so it is doing them a lot of damage a lot of damage in terms of their self esteem in terms of their personality in terms of everything and parents shape the personality of children mm. 
Okay. That one never, nobody should uh, even discuss anything about that. They shape the personality. You want this child to become aggressive, they will expose them to aggression. Mm -hmm. They will become very aggressive. I, I, I didn't tell you that um, these teenagers who have found themselves in this kind of uh, 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 domestic violence uh, relationship, they are not empathetic. Okay. They are as hard as a rock. Hawana feelings, they have seen it all in life. I've seen somebody holding a knife, I've seen a gun, I've had gunshots in my neighborhood in what they have seen. So nothing they, scares nothing them. Scares them. They, 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 they are, and th these are the people mm -hmm. you could find that even in future, um, kuwa is not an issue. Stabbing somebody is not an issue. You've been exposed to too much violence. So that is a no, it's, it's a norm to you. Oh yeah, it's a norm to you. So when you find somebody is not empathetic, mm -hmm. uh, you should be worried. That person is inhuman, can mm -hmm. do anything. Okay. So it is as a result of domestic violence at home. Okay. Mm. And we've spoken mostly about the physical violence mm -hmm. and how it affects the children. Yes. What about these other forms of violence, mm -hmm. the abusive you know, violence, mm -hmm. the financial violence? Mm -hmm. How does it affect the children? It is equally it? affects. Okay, the physical ones affect them because now it's what they are seeing. Mm -hmm. Somebody could be going through emotional violence, like maybe the mother, verbal insults and everything. They will also be affected, but not as much as these other... F the, you know, you know, your insult na kutandikwa, the, uh, uda wa kutandikwa ni more, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but sasa hii ya, ya, ya emotional one, sometimes you find that the victim go th goes through them silently. Mm -hmm. uh, you are told to terminate a baby, so not, maybe the society is not even aware that that is happening. So it is, it is more. But once the mother is sharing this, all the children are seeing the mother being abused and what, they can also pick something from it. Mm -hmm. I told you what is good for dad is also good for me. So they could also pick like, okay, women are supposed to be insulted. Uh, so they'll pick some insult and you wonder, ah, at your you age, had that at home. So mm -hmm. What they had is actually what they are repeating. So um, it also affects, it okay. affects children. And is there a role that the society, you know, is to play mm -hmm. in ensuring that these children are shielded from this? A situation maybe you know they're already in that family and you can't force the parents to divorce at this point mm -hmm. so is there a role that society can yeah play? yeah yeah number one uh we talk of um there's what we call agents of socialization mm -hmm. one of them is school as a school is there enough uh, uh, personnel in the guidance and counseling department is there a counseling department that can handle these children because if you empower them from school mm -hmm. they can handle their issues at home uh, other than school the church because this 80 percent of kenyans are christian mm -hmm. yeah so is it 20 percent who don't go to church they are still within the christianity setup eh? yeah. so these 80 percent that are christian we assume that they fight at home and they also go to church in church preach to them mm -hmm. in as much as you tell them there is heaven let them know that we, we are supposed to create that heaven here on earth mm -hmm. so you teach them the the, the 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 effects of battling effects of domestic violence and everything at 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 um at uh church setup we also talk about now the society mm -hmm. uh, there is law Nyumbakumi, the chief, and everyone. Today, I think when people are having issues about uh, parenting and what, wanakimishana kwa chief, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the chief can come in handy uh, through the Nyumbakumi and they know that our watoto, they are suffering because the parents are fighting. And most people who fight unakuta, maybe they even under the influence of drugs. Mm -hmm. The alcoholic, so the mother fights, the father fights, they break things and everything. So mm -hmm. the chief and the society, the law can come in and see how to rescue those children. Right. And maybe rehabilitate the parents if it uh, need be. Okay, finally, as mm -hmm. we come to an end of this conversation, mm -hmm. my host, my co-host had asked a question yes. earlier. Are there communities or ethnic groups that are more prone mm -hmm. to domestic violence mm -hmm. than others? Yeah, sure. Um, it's only that time uh, did not allow us to go through now what we call gender-based violence <coughs> so that we can ask what causes that. There are things we call gender stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Uh, some some issues you, you must have heard some people say um, men are better drivers than women it's a stereotype it's mm -hmm. not true it's something it's a rumor that a slogan that is neither here nor there we have women drivers who are very good isn't it yeah. now we have stereotypes eh? and uh, you, you you find that uh, some stereotypes will want the woman to be inferior the woman to be at, at home and what so you find that there are their cultures that have elevated the man to be the king up there and the woman to be down there. Mm -hmm. 
So mm -hmm. the woman is there to be heard and not to be seen. So if such a woman tries to fight for her right or to communicate to be heard, they are intimidated and put down. Mm -hmm. So there are cultures that you'll find that domestic violence is higher than others. Talk about financial, financially. Mm -hmm. People who are financially empowered and people who are not financially empowered, these people who are battling poverty are likely to fight more. Okay. How do you fight when you have money? <laughs> and even when you have money and you're fighting, your fight is on another level. <laughs> Maybe ni, ni kwa mutandao. But this was their physical. You know, physical, you punch, you do what you call on mm -hmm. the insults that you know in this world. So f uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, financial capability, you find that there are some regions that are disadvantaged. There are some families that are disadvantaged. They are fighting because of mm -hmm. the, some issues. Because they are fighting, maybe they, 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 are, they, are, they are poor. They didn't get quality education. They didn't get to know much about family planning. So they have 10 children. They don't have enough food to feed them. How do you think that home will look like? Mm -hmm. Very chaotic. V very chaotic. Very chaotic. The rate of crime will be he very high. Mm -hmm. you, you're, uh, you're struggling to survive. So you expect some regions to have uh, uh, that kind of um, the rate to be higher than these than others. others. Talk of even people who know God, mm. people who don't know God. So a place where um, people are more into drugs, for example, alcoholism, the wife drinks, the husband drinks. And this is not the common social drink that we know of. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, when taken in small amount, is a stimulant drug. When okay. taken in huge um, amounts, it becomes depressant. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking of these people wale wanakunywa na lala kwa mtaro. Yeah. Now these people who are into that kind of alcoholism they'll fight a lot. Wana pigana na chupa and everything and everything. But mm -hmm. sober people, people who are now not into drugs, they are sober. So there are areas that you expect this violence to be higher mm -hmm. as compared to others based on some factors. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this. Sana. It's been an incredible incredible discussion. Mm -hmm. Always a pleasure having you. Mm -hmm. So now uh, tell uh, people where they can find it. This is your camera and your final word as we close. All right. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, my final word is to say this. Eh? We want to bring up a generation. And I always say that things don't go wrong. They start wrong. So if you want to nurture your child, start it early enough so that you'll be able to help them. So you can find me for more content uh, uh, on FB, Facebook, that is Zipi Wanyeki. You can follow me on YouTube. My YouTube channel is Zipora Wanyeki. On Instagram, you can find me at Wanyeki1 Zipora. And be blessed. Thank you very much. Karibu sana. Uh, that has been Zipora Wanyeki, a counselor and a teacher and a trainer talking to us about effects of domestic violence on children and she's an advocate for you know mental health for peace peaceful living and of course uh talking against domestic violence uh is what she came to do today and we celebrate we celebrate her and other women who are doing such incredible things in our society so now we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with valentine for wcw don't go too far